government basically bowed down to an extremist party, even an extremist newspaper, and not even like a majority, not even like the Catholic Church, but like uh, just a minority thing. And, and this is, uh, I think it's, it's terribly sad and it's terribly worrying for anybody who has ever expressed their opinions. You're listening to episode 57 of the National Secular Society podcast produced by Emma Park. This episode is part of our series of podcasts on secularism around the world. Today I'm going to be discussing Hungary and the ways in which Viktor Orban's a liberal Christian regime is threatening liberal secular democracy. My guest is Gaspar Bekes, a journalist, secularist campaigner, activist for youth rights and secretary of the Hungarian Atheist Society. Earlier this year, Gaspar was dismissed from his job as a civil servant at the mayor's office of the Budapest City Hall after a targeted campaign against him by far-right Christian groups supported by Orban's government. They accused him of offending Christians and even committing blasphemy. His crime, to have published an article three years earlier, in which he argued that child baptism went against fundamental human rights and should be made illegal. Whatever the strengths and weaknesses of this view, the idea that anyone might be dismissed from their job for having expressed it in an unrelated context seems clearly unfair. Gashba will be talking to me about his experience of being targeted by religious extremists, about why the church and state are so closely intertwined in modern Hungary, and about how Orban is using illiberal Christian values to clamp down on LGBT and reproductive rights. He will also be talking about his experience of Hungary's faith schools as a youth campaigner, and about the involvement of the Catholic Church in child protection services, despite recent paedophilia scandals. We in the UK might be thankful for our somewhat greater measure of press and political freedom, at least at the moment. However, Gashbar's story should perhaps make us less complacent. In Britain earlier this year, a teacher was suspended after the harassment of conservative and extremist religious campaigners for daring to show a blasphemous cartoon in the classroom. And no one in the political establishment, either on the right or left, did anything to defend him. We might wonder whether a politically repressive regime could take root in Britain too, if the rhetoric of offence continues to operate as such an effective weapon against those who try to speak freely, whether about religion or anything else. All the more reason for people and organisations around the world who value liberal secular democracy to make connections with one another. Gashba Bakesh, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me and a big uh, welcome to the audience as well. So let's start with a general question about um, the situation in Hungary. Now, I understand that the Hungarian Atheist Society recently submitted a report on the way that Orbán's conservative Christian regime has eroded human rights, and in particular, how recent amendments to the constitution have sort of imposed a, a Christian cultural identity on Hungary. Could, could you talk us through some of the details about how Orbán's government is eroding human rights and how he's sort of using this Christian approach to do that? Definitely. Well, Orbán's regime has been reigning over Hungary since, well, 2010. And around 2015 or a bit later, they've been introducing this new idea of illiberal Christian democracy. And this might raise some eyebrows for, for good reason, because why, is demo why does a de democracy have objectives such as uh, illiberal or, or Christian? And can a democracy be Christian at all? Or isn't so this is the one of the problems of calling such a system christian is already discriminatory and they acted upon this in in several ways uh, they wrote in the constitution that uh, hungary uh, has to protect uh, its part of its christian heritage and the holy crown and uh, also that the, the the hungarian institutions have to protect hungary's christian heritage and also that uh, Every child has the right to be raised in like a Christian cultural atmosphere. Are we talking about um, Catholicism particularly here or other branches of Christianity as well? Well, in Hungary, Christ uh, Catholicism is the most dominant type of Christianity, but there are other Protestant factions as well. But but definitely Catholicism is the, the most dominant. But uh, the Ross census was in 2011. And it was little over 50%, the number of, uh, of Christians. How you ask a question about religion is very important uh, regarding the result. So one of the things we were fighting for is to have questions that are not biased towards, towards Christians. So there are other uh, surveys, for example, with the youth, 
And it's uh, the, the latest survey I could cite was a, a youth survey which said 94% of young people between the ages of 15 and I think 30 were non-religious. So religion is, is losing its, its track uh, very, very fast in Hungary. And the next census, which is, I think either this year or next year, maybe it's shifted to because of the COVID, I think it will show like a, a huge drop in, in religiousness overall. But despite this, um, Orban is, is trying to make Hungary into a, a Christian um, country, very much a Christian country, according to his own idea of Christianity. Yeah, I, I don't think it's working, to be honest. I think it's the idea that this is the goal. So, so the question is, of course, why is he making this? Is it because he's a devout Christian? Of course not. So in 1990s, when he was leading the Liberal Party, he said that the priests should be on their knees. And it was a fairly uh, anti-clerical um, party. And now it's everybody is, of course, a devout Christian in the party and they allied, align themselves with the, with the Christian Democratic Party. Um, so it's a coalition government. But the Christian Democratic Party alone like had three or four percent of votes when they when they were campaigning alone. Why, why did Orban change his position so much, do you think, between the 90s and the last decade? Well, I think his, his moral, the party's moral position was being eroded. I think after 10 years of governance, which was riddled with corruption and, and terrible, terrible decisions uh, from a policy perspective, I think they were losing their grip on power. So I think religion has been invented for the very reason of, of holding power and, and performing power. As we think of Christianity, it was used as, well, the king was, for example, in a country, the, the sovereign, uh, elected by God to, to rule, and this was the deal between the church and the state. So to, legit, to legitimize uh, a certain ruler, so Orban basically dusted off this, this uh, very, very old concept of, of using uh, religion to, to secure his position. And of course, religion equals morality uh, in their eyes, and that's the message they're pushing. If you're non-religious, you're immoral. And that's what they try to use to reinforce their position. Uh, and of course, the other thing is, which I think recently has been uh, more effective, that uh, nobody from the opposition really dares to criticize religion. So if any kind of a liberal policy is wrapped in a religious packaging, there is a much less backlash. Why is it that the opposition now is scared to criticize religion? Well, I think the opposition is really in a state of this war economy. Added context is that the Hungarian voting system has been severely uh, changed by the Orban regime because they enjoy two thirds majority. So they they basically restructured the constitutional court, uh, the committees, uh, the voting systems. So they put party functionaries in every uh, possible uh, position. So, so to, to, to win an election against the Orban regime is, is very, very hard. So the only chance the, the opposition has is to band together. And I think what they think is that, that you can only push messages which are not offensive to anyone. How much influence does the Catholic Church or, other, or do other Christian groups have on the state, on government and on society in practice, would you say? Well, I think uh, a lot. It's not like in Poland, but... Uh, but there is absolutely a, a huge influence. And the reason, I mean, the, the, the way they can exercise this is they are being handed an extreme amount of funds from, from the government. So just to put it into perspective, Hungary has the most church funding from the state per capita in the whole European Union. And they're very proud of that. It's, it's a huge amount of money that's being spent on the church just to put it into perspective, there's an Orthodox uh, church, like a, an Eastern Orthodoxy in Hungary. They have two churches and nine priests and like a thousand followers. And they just received a new church from the state, completely funded by the state. And they received like three billion foreigns of support. Uh, well, let's talk, um, Gashbar, a bit more about your situation. So in December 2020, um, a fundamentalist Christian newspaper claimed that you had previously insulted Christians for wanting to ban baptisms. And as a result, you were later dismissed from your job in their climate and environmental affairs department at um, Budapest City Hall. Can you tell us a bit more about how this happened and, and why you were dismissed? Well, yes, of course. So uh, I was actually, uh, this article, the first article that was published was in January 28th, which was my birthday. So, uh, and it was published 
on a far right portal. There's called uh, Sunday.hu, uh, and it's a it's a it's a far right uh, Christian radical portal, basically. And the way I'm the reason why I'm saying this, for example, is there uh, on the day of Christian uh, victims, uh, they shared a picture of the Ku Klux Klan and the burning cross, and and members of the of the editorial board are actually part were parts of Nazi organizations and revisionist organizations promoting like Hungarian Nazism and stuff like that. And so like paramilitary organizations. And this newspaper is funded by the coalition partner of the Orban government. So the Christian Democratic Party, uh, it's, it's, it's funded by them. So the first article was published by one of these former neo-Nazis saying I was... Um, unfair to the soldiers of the Second World War, because I claim that the conscript soldiers of the Second World War were not heroes, they were victims. But that was in the title. But they kind of twisted this into saying I, I desecrated the memory of these soldiers by saying they were not heroes, whereas I just uh, iterated a, a pacifist perspective, saying that if we fetishize violence by calling conscripts heroes, then we're, we could end up in the same situation. So that was the first one, and they were so they were fishing actually for something on me because once they learned that I was working at City Hall, they wanted to attack City Hall. It wasn't mostly about me; it was about the uh, City Hall because an opposition government's been elected in City Hall uh, in the capital. So this is the biggest city in Hungary, two million people, so twenty percent of the population lives there, and it was a huge deal when the mayor was elected there. So the government has been doing everything in the power to kind of smear the mayor and the municipality and finding any kind of leverage over them. So somebody found uh, some information about me and that I was working there. And that's when they tried to reach the municipal government through me. So I was a civil servant. Uh, so I had no connection to the political branch. Uh, and, and also I had no power in the office. So I was in an entry level position. So, but back to the articles itself, themselves. So the first article was uh, basically about this, this war article. And the reason for that is that they just went through my Facebook account and the latest post I shared publicly was this article uh, of, of the war, which I wrote years ago, but it was the anniversary. So I shared it again. And then they started digging uh, and then they found, well, this guy has wrote like 50 or 60 articles. And, uh, and then they found my article on baptisms. So, and that's when the, when the circus really started. What had you argued in this article about baptisms? Well, in the article, I argued that based on Hungarian law and human rights, so Hungarian rights and international uh, rights and accords, baptisms should be illegal. And the reason for this is that a baptism is an act by the parent where somebody is symbolically forced into a religion they have not chosen. And although this is symbolic, it signals to society that this kind of behavior is acceptable and it leads to other kind of uh, real effects, real indoctrination later on of children into religion. And especially because when baptisms happen, the church and the parents enter into a contract, actually, saying that the children will be raised in a Christian uh, value or a Christian value environment, and they will be raised explicitly Christian or Catholic if it's a Catholic baptism. So, and I, I stated that based on Hungarian constitution, article seven, it says every uh, citizen has a right to freedom of thought and religion. And there isn't like a, a small letter part saying that children are excluded. And also more explicitly, the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, which was ratified by Hungary. And it states that explicitly that children have the right to religious freedoms and, and freedom of thought. So I argued that obviously uh, an act such as this and the following indoctrination is against uh, fundamental law in, in Hungary. And although this is not enforced or practiced, but from a legal perspective, this is absolutely uh, clear. And it's important to stress that this wasn't a satire. This was a, an article which just uh, coldly stated the facts. It wasn't, you know, derogatory to Christians. It didn't uh, demean anybody. It, it was just stating, well, a legal argument. Making a case. Yeah. So then you said um, it was when they discovered this article that the circus really started. So what happened? Well, the, this, 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 this uh, far right uh, newspaper started publishing articles and saying that I am a Christian hater and that I, I de 
I, I basically I was committing blasphemy and that I offended religious people. Although what I, I, I was saying, I wasn't criticizing religious people. I was criticizing a religious duty or yeah practice yeah so but they of course made this connection uh which was untrue and of course the government has a huge media ap apparatus in hungary they bought most of the hungarian media so just to put in perspective perspective there is no hungarian radio station which is not under the control of the government or the government's uh, different uh well uh oligarchs so when they publish an article then and if it's worthy of smearing somebody what they do is they just literally verbatim copy paste the article into all of their newspapers and that's what they did that they published that i'm working there i am the advisor of the mayor and that i am uh, a christian hater and and i dare to say that baptisms should be banned and whatnot and, and afterwards uh, uh, this was on a, on a Thursday, and then by Sunday, the articles were published, and the, by Sunday, the leader of the Hungarian Christian Democratic Party, the coalition partner of Orban, uh, and, and the vice prime minister demanded my termination from uh, the municipal government, so the mayor's office. And then on Monday, uh, I was summoned by my, my superior, my, the, the head of the mayor's office, who, whom I never met. So who wasn't my boss directly and uh, they offered, so they were just handing me out a, a letter of reprimand uh, without any discussion or, or, or anything. And the letter of reprimand said that I violated the policies of the municipal government by not making it clear that my articles that were written three years ago were not written in the name of the office. I, I repeat this because I know it's hard to, to believe that they literally said that I didn't make it clear that articles that I wrote three years ago in a completely different topic, in a completely different capacity, uh, before I worked at the office, were not written by me as a civil servant. Sounds very Kafka-esque. Yeah, it was. It was. And I was, I was shocked. I was saying like uh, how, and of course they said that I also offended Christians. And I was asking, like, what was offensive about it? And, like, no, actually no church statements were, were issued. So no actual religious groups were protesting what I said. It was uh, just the party, so the, the, this Christian Democratic Party and their newspaper and, of course, the government media, which is a, a connection of that. So no actual churches or church people were criticizing this, really. So, so how would they gauge the offensiveness of this? And, and also, like, why is offensiveness uh, a, a, like a basis for termination because obviously anybody can be offended by anything is, is there a culture of um offense um a rhetoric of offense used against people who don't conform to the um conservative christian morality in hungary at the moment oh yeah 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 of course definitely i think it's it's, it's definitely present whatever hungarian uh, atheists or secular people say it's offensive so for example there was this new book published uh uh, by a, a feminist theologian, the, the, theologian uh, in Hungary about church abuse. So it, was, it turned out that over, over 40 people were abused and they came forward uh, and they were all abused by priests. Uh, and a, a book was written on this. And of course, the church and a lot of government media said that, that this is blasphemy and this is just a money grab and it's offensive to Christians. So basically without, so this was literally about raping children this book and it was it was a groundbreaking book which is a bestseller in Hungary now and and it showed how and nobody went to jail for, from those people who molested kids because of the church cover up and instead of a, a, a sincere reaction from the government what they did was saying that this is just uh, uh, derogatory to Christians offensive and whatnot so so there's definitely this culture of offensiveness and being uh, offended by basically anything that's critical. And that's why the church is in bed with uh, the government, because then the government can pretend like they're offended by their, in their religious state. And, and it's very much present. And uh, they actually demanded, the office demanded that I apologize publicly for offending Christians and not upholding the values of the municipality. And I said, I have to think about it and ask my lawyer. And then I was fired by the next morning. Since then, have you received further hate mail or a persecution or attacks from either this far right Christian newspaper or from other groups? Well, I did. So sometimes when there's an article that's connected to religion or secularism, my name is mentioned among some other names, uh, just as like a filler 
that uh, also do you remember Gaspar Bekes doing this and doing that? And I did receive a number of death threats, uh, very explicit death threats. Uh, and of course, a lot of like hundreds of defamatory statements and, and, and offensive things, but, but specific death threats, like a dozen death threats. I filed police reports in every instance and the police rejected it. They, they, they didn't care enough to even identify if it was a comment or if it was a personal message and they actually mixed it up. So I appealed, but the the prosecutor's office also denied investigating the case. So the Hungarian authorities, they completely uh, left me vulnerable to, to attack and they did nothing to, to prevent very, well, potentially very credible death threats against my life. So actually when I was receiving the letter of reprimand without my knowledge, the, the municipal government issued a statement and the statement said that they are rejecting my views and they're distancing themselves from me and that their views are not matching mine. So basically I was ostracized by my own employer, despite that the fact that I was getting death threats and I advised the, the, my employer that I'm getting threats. And uh, I think this made the situation a lot worse. And luckily there wasn't any action, but there could have been. And Hungarian law actually very specifically states that uh, members of, of public office are protected under law, so they enjoy like like enhanced protections, and I felt no enhanced protection or protection whatsoever from my own employer and from the police either. What have you been doing since, and um, have you had another job? I do have another job, but I'm afraid to say it on air, uh, which is I think a shame because I said I'm not afraid, but obviously I have to earn a living from something, and uh, at this point I I cannot publicly say where I work which I think is a terrible disgrace to Hungarian society and, and the Hungarian politics in general, that you cannot express where you work because you're afraid of retaliation and another uh, smear campaign. Uh, and, and I think it's when we get to that point, it's, it's unacceptable. The thing is that, so the reaction of the political parties, there was no reaction whatsoever from any political party based on this. Even the opposition to um, to Orban. Yeah, yeah, no, they basically there wasn't, and we explicitly asked questions from the parties. What do they think about this? And they didn't even respond, except one party which issued like a, a very political response uh, with no content whatsoever. So they were not, they they didn't dare to criticize. Other people, actually, even uh, theologians and 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 and, uh, and members of, of of faith, have criticized this decision, and a lot of like independent political influencers have criticized this decision, and of course, a number of international organizations, organizations and domestic organizations have criticized this uh, decision, but there was no discussion for whatsoever from from the opposition parties, but not even not just the opposition parties, but the media. So the opposition media didn't even ask me to for an interview. I explicitly asked opposition newspapers and media to to let me say my side of the story and they refused. And I did over a hundred interviews in the last five years uh, with these media groups and they were very happy to 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 talk about uh, my activism uh, beforehand. But uh, now that this happened though, and it's important also to note that the mayor is running for prime minister this election. So what I gather is that they don't want to ruin his election chances and to diminish his election chances because they might believe that he's the only one who can defeat Orban. But the problem is we cannot really defeat Orban if we are getting accustomed to the same kind of illiberal Christian state. So so that's the, the main problem that that we cannot fight fire with fire or not just that, but if we become the Orban regime, then we're not really changing anything, are we? And I think the secular values of a country are very important. And it's not just about me. It's about anybody who has been a journalist, anybody who has exercised their freedom of speech, anybody uh, who is an atheist, anybody who is just secular, and anybody who is taking a public office. Because basically what the opposition is saying now and the municipal government is saying that if you ever said anything that offends anyone, it doesn't fit into our political agenda, you will be terminated immediately and without hesitation. They didn't fold for like a, a, a majority party. It was actual Nazis. So actual a Nazi portal with far right Christian values was the one who started this. And the government basically bowed down to an extremist party with an extremist newspaper and not even like a majority, not even like the Catholic Church, but like uh, just a minority thing. 
And and this is this is uh, I think it's it's terribly sad and it's terribly worrying for anybody who has ever expressed their opinions. And if this is what we're uh, expecting for a regime change, well, it's not going to happen. Just on on this issue of the um, a liberal Christian democracy. What about the situation of LGBT plus people in Hungary? The the perceived discrimination against them by Orbán's government has received quite a lot of coverage in the news over the last year or two. What's the current situation? How much um, are LGBT plus people discriminated against in Hungary? Well, I would say increasingly. And the the interesting thing about this, that in my opinion, this has come from a reaction to church criticism. So as I said before, there was this book book published about uh, clergy abuse in the Catholic Church, and it was very influential. So it was written by a very influential theologian uh, a woman. Uh, and um, and it collected very, very like shocking accounts of abuse. And as, as I said, this is a bestseller now in Hungary. So what first the Orban regime did is they introduced a law following the publication of this book or shortly beforehand, uh, that is like a, an extension of the child protection law. So the, the first version was saying that, well, we'll increase penalties for pedophiles and, and whatnot. Uh, the thing was that they added an extra clause to this anti-pedophilia law saying that you are not allowed to propagate or to advertise uh, homosexuality uh, to children. So anybody under 18, you cannot advertise, not just advertise, you cannot even show homosexuality in any any context to, to people under 18. And also you cannot show homosexuality next to a, a church. So basically 200 meters from a church, you cannot present homosexuality in any way or any form. And if you do, it incurs a penalty. And this basically penalized the Hungarian LGBTQ community severely it set up criminal prosecution against them and also it it uh, it meshed together pedophilia and uh, homosexuality which is also extremely unacceptable and this was like in recent months and uh, has this um, approach had much public support is is there a, a general um, sort of bias against lgbt people in hungary or is it just orban's government specifically and then the influence of, of religious groups well, there definitely is, unfortunately, a uh, bias against homosexuals in Hungary. And the government is very good at, at influencing people and also like kind of measuring like what group to hate at the moment. And um, so, as I said, like the whole homo, this whole, whole law was basically made to to divert attention from the crisis of the church and the pedophilia, because in Hungary, even the most devout Christians are are repulsed by pedophilia in the church. And this has been polled, this has been shown. And w since the government allied itself on a moral basis to the church, then if the moral basis of the church itself is eroded, obviously that has an effect on the government's moral standing. So they had to do something and something big and something radical to divert attention. And of course, uh, divert it to another group you can hate. So obviously Hungary, it's like it's like in the Orville novels and uh, or, or the, the 1984, basically that there's a five minutes of hate and then and then you have to just hate somebody. But in Hungary, it's not minutes, it's basically constant. So I, I mean, Orville is becoming the utopia, uh, considering like hate is just nonstop in Hungary, it's 24 seven. And and well, we, we, there was a hate campaign against uh, Soros, George Soros, uh, who is of course uh, uh, a Jew. There was a campaign against uh, gypsies. There was a campaign against uh, homeless people. And now there are gays and I'm sure atheists are somewhere down the line. And what about abortion and women's rights? Well, as I said, so, so basically uh, in the constitution, there is a clause saying that uh, life starts at conception. So definitely if they want, they can just make a law anytime banning abortions. Uh, and definitely there's a rhetoric saying that uh, life is sacred, life starts at conception, but it's not illegal to, to do abortions in Hungary. So you don't have to have a specific reason to have an abortion. But this might change any time because the, the, uh, the coalition partner, the Christian Democratic Party, is completely against abortion uh, from, a, from a religious perspective. So you never know what will happen. Uh, I'm definitely fearful for a crackdown on, on reproduction rights. So, so that's, that's reproduction rights. But what about, I mean, it, it, given that it's an illiberal Christian democracy, I mean, it, are women sort of pigeonholed in any way in terms of their place in society? 
Well, there are a lot of, these are a lot of rhetoric from the government saying that the woman's uh, best thing a woman can do is to be a good uh, mother, and then that's their place and, and in the family. And there are very, very generous support for for family planning and a lot of family planning in the contraception uh, way, but like family planning in general, saying that you should have as many children as possible. They very much there's a rhetoric that that's the best thing a woman can do, and also that the minister for uh, family said that well, it's not. If a woman earns less, that's okay, because why would a woman want to earn more? And and so there's definitely a rhetoric that's very conservative. One of the most worrying things in Hungary is that the the religious schools are becoming increasingly dominant. So the government is basically outsourcing education and uh, child protection services as well to the Catholic Church and other churches. So for example, now 60% of child protection services are in the hands of the Catholic Church. And they say this is the best place there could be. D- despite the recent report about um, Peter Villa and the Catholic Church. Yes. I mean, this is mind boggling. I mean, it's hard to find the words, but really, like, if there's any organization that absolutely has no place in child protection is the Catholic Church. They neither have the, well, the track record, neither have the, the means or the conviction to protect children from anything, quite the opposite. So, I mean... We all know how the Catholic Church operates in basically every country and and that unless they're like actually pressured into doing something, their policies are allowing for, for sexual abuse and cover ups. And of course, the, the biggest problem is the absolute power that uh, the clergymen wield. And of course, if there's absolute power, there's also absolute corruption. And it, it is makes people very vulnerable to abuse, especially if they're already in a vulnerable state, such as children in foster homes. So, so giving this to the Catholic Church is one of the biggest crimes against humanity in Hungary, uh, I would say, without, without uh, exaggeration. And of course, 60% is now in the hands of the Catholic Church in, in the entirety of Hungary. And not only that, in the last 10 years, the number of religious schools have doubled, but the number of religious young people has actually halved. So there's not like following a trend. And these religious schools, they receive four times as much government funding as public schools. And uh, public schools are being defunded. So the, 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 the quality of education is decreasing extremely sharply in the last 10 years. So, but this is a goal. Actually, the Hungarian government's goal is to make people obedient servants and to stray people away from high schools and to put them in vocational schools or put them into church schools. So either you cannot enter university and then you're basically a subject of, of industrial uh, needs Uh, Or you are basically trained into uh, perhaps smarter, but government supporting citizen. And uh, and, and nobody should go to public schools or public high schools because then you might earn a degree. So Hungary is the only country in the EU except Luxembourg, which has a steadily decreasing number of university students. Uh, And they are basically doing everything in their power to push people away from universities. So they decrease the the mandatory uh, education age to 16. So after 16, you can quit school. Uh, which is terrible, according to education policymakers and, and scientists. So they're doing a lot of th- these things. And, and the religious schools, their role is to indoctrinate children into, into Christianity. And the way they're doing this is they are very strict rules. So the, the, the Hungarian laws, so the church and is exempt from the emancipation laws. It's exempt from uh, equal rights laws. So they can do whatever they want. They can segregate people based on race, uh, gender, uh, religion. And are they, in fact, doing that? They are. They are. Some schools don't accept, for example, atheists. And if you don't present a letter of baptism, then you are not accepted. So as I said, baptism isn't just a symbolic thing. It's uh, sometimes a way to enjoy quality education. There are over 100 uh, settlements in Hungary where there is no other school than a religious school. Uh, and, they can only, and in these schools, although they are funded by the government and uh, uh, you have to be religious, so you have to practice religion, and it's so it's so strict that you actually have a little book booklet where they put a stamp on every mass you went to, and if you didn't go to mass, you were actually reprimanded, and you can even be kicked out of the school. And then you, and and religious education is mandatory, so uh, you cannot choose ethics instead of religious religion class. And there, uh, well, on paper, it's it's in line with uh, its civil norms of society, but in fact. It's homophobic, it's atheophobic, uh, it's uh, anti- anti-contraception. So we have a lot of accounts that uh, these religious uh, teachings, uh, what they teach actually in the schools, it's, it's completely against the civilizational norms of, of uh, 
of Hungary and what we hold dear. So you've been um, directly involved in campaigning against these sorts of schools. Yes, I've been campaigning against this, and I, and, and the secular activism uh, is part of my activism. Not but not just because of youth rights, but predominantly because of youth rights, because I feel the intersection of youth rights and uh, and and the clergy's influence re- is is uh, is making the diverse situations for children. So basically, young people have no agency and. Adults are not necessarily representing their best interests. And I think there's a concept that children are helpless. They're just subjects to whatever their parents or school systems are pushing to them. But I mean, this is this is very wrong, because if you think about children, especially above like age of 14, they have to experience an environment where they are taken seriously and where they are taking as well, of course, uh, uh, adjusted to their capacities, but but taking seriously nonetheless, because otherwise, at 18, you just switch the uh, the switch of being a responsible citizen, and nothing happens. So you cannot tr- train responsible citizens by 18 years of neglect and and rejection of basic and fundamental rights, because then, as a, an adult, you will not be interested in those rights and practicing those rights because you never experienced them, you never knew them, you never practiced them, and if you try to practice them, you were being uh, ostracized by your teachers, your classmates, uh, your your school system. These church-run schools are indoctrinating children and they are pushing an agenda that's completely opposite to to what society holds uh, dear as norms. And it's creating a parallel society. And this kind of parallel society is extremely dangerous uh, to, to, to sustainability of our democracy. Gashba, we could um, talk for hours about this. Um, it sounds like you've, it's, it's a really interesting and, and difficult situation that Hungary's in at the moment. Um, what do you think is the way forward for Hungary in the medium term? Do you think there is hope that it may become more liberal and secular? And if so, how, how is that going to be achieved? Well, if you're an activist, you have to be optimistic, right? So I am going to say something optimistic. How likely is it? I don't know. The Oppression of Hungarian atheists by rhetoric and by law, the the backlash against several secular communities, the promotion of church and the the shameless promotion of church agenda by money, the rampant pedophilia which is not being dealt with, uh, is definitely I think awakening a lot of people's uh, inner secular values. So I think some there are some values that that we take for granted. And there are some identities that are dormant in people. So, for example, most atheists are are not really living uh, the atheist um, life in a way that they're not necessarily knowledgeable about their atheism. They just simply don't believe. So it's like a topic that they just don't don't uh, care about much. So I think a lot of Hungarian atheists, which is a lot of people, especially young people, as I said, 94% uh, are non-religious. So many of them are explicitly atheistic. Uh, are definitely becoming frustrated and they will uh, be unsupportive of this government because of this. And and I think this is what's happening in Hungary. So every time there is a statement against uh, Hungarian atheists or saying atheists are immoral or we have to find a, a final, we have to achieve a final victory against them, we see an influx of people into the organization's Facebook group, for example, which has more than 10,000 people now in Hungary. And every time this happens, we see if we see an uptick in 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 uh, um, in in the membership of this uh, of this group. So definitely, I think there's a, there's a backlash, and I think Orban is underestimating Hungary's religious capacity. And I think I don't think this indoctrination is really working, especially because of freedom of information. So obviously, people are not buying this kind of very radical Christian idea of of religion and society, because in the 21st century, this is simply just it's not compatible with with what we believe and what we know about about society about uh, the world about nature so people are questioning this and people will not uh, be indoctrinated even with the harshest means and i think this actually creates more backlash than support uh, from uh, from society and this is my hope that orban is actually creating a new front against himself which he doesn't know about and uh, he, he himself overestimated the church's influence, which, of course, he contributes to because all the money uh, that they're pumping into the church, of course, visually, it seems like they're everywhere and they, they have unlimited amount of funds. So what I hope is that, that the secular values and even atheist values or, or atheists in general will, will, will rise up, band together and will be a significant opposition force against the Orban regime, especially young people.
Well, good luck with that, um, Gash Barbekesh, and thank you very much for um, coming on the podcast. Thank you very much. This episode was produced by the National Secular Society, all rights reserved. The views expressed by contributors do not necessarily represent those of the NSS. You can access the show notes and subscriber information for this and all our episodes at secularism.org.uk forward slash podcast. For feedback, comments and suggestions, please email podcast at secularism.org.uk. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and leave us a positive review wherever you can. Thanks for listening and I hope you can join us next time.